You're listening to The Marketing Funnel Show, episode number 36. Do you have an audience, maybe like a Facebook group, an email list, video viewers, or even, you know, local people or social media connections who gobble up your free content? But when it's time to buy, all you hear are crickets. Well, there are a few things at play and we're gonna dive into one big one today. Welcome to the Marketing Funnel Show. I'm your host, Michelle Evans, and this is the podcast for coaches, experts, and online business owners to learn how to go from simply surviving to sold out using the power of marketing funnels. All right, let's jump into today's show. Hey, hey, welcome. Welcome to another great show. Listen, I am super excited to dive into today's topic because it was a game changer for me and my business. But I first had to go through some painful lessons that I'll share with you today. So, you know, let's just dive in. Today, let's talk about the question that I got. Why doesn't anyone want what I'm selling? Why doesn't anyone want my offer? Now, the person who asked me this question was specifically talking about her uh, trying to sell her one-on-one service over the phone. And she wanted to talk with me about it because she knew that I had struggled a few years back with really selling and that I'd gotten to a place where I really don't have to quote unquote sell in traditional terms anymore, yet I always have new clients coming in. And she wanted to know like, what the heck is your secret? Because she, you know, she was just finding that she was spending a lot of time talking to people on the phone and it was going nowhere, like it wasn't turning into clients. And, and she just wasn't sure how. So let me tell you a short story. And first, if you if you sell, you know, one on one on the phone in person, whatever, um, this is going to be super applicable to you. But it's also applicable to you if you sell on webinars, if you sell at events, or if you just send people to a sales page. So I'm specifically going to be talking about a story about doing one on one sales on the phone. But I got to tell you. These same principles apply no matter what kind of selling situation you're in because it has to do with getting people ready for the sale. That's really, really the key. So let me tell you a short story um, from my past. So when I was in my super expensive lesson mastermind, so the mastermind was a $30,000 a year mastermind, And unfortunately, the person who led the mastermind was not the right mentor for me, was not uh, a good fit for me. And um, really, she was just one of these people that was just like a power seller, right? I think that's part of what attracted me as I was like, ooh, I wish that I could sell like that. But the truth is, I'm nothing like that. And she would just get all up in people's faces and just be like pushing her stuff. And that is not how I show up best. It's not my style. Um, I'm not comfortable with it. So I would do like everything and the kitchen sink to avoid it. Um, And so, you know, I had to find, okay, what is my style of selling? Because obviously to have a business, you and I have to make sales, right? You have no business if you have nobody buying your stuff. And so that's, you know, business one-on-one is how do I get more sales in the door? And, you know, for me at that time in in the mastermind, my um, coach, I kind of use that word lightly, but my coach, she was all about going to events and just like getting as many people as you can and then following up with them. So, you know, I'd go speak at an event, um, maybe have a um, trade show booth up at an event and I would spend that whole event just gathering business cards, basically. Because this was her whole approach. Like, you just get their business cards, you give them a little, you know, trinket or whatever, they have good feelings about you, and then you follow up and sell. 
or you sell right there on the floor. Well, I could never really sell that well on the trade show floor um, because I because I just I, I'm just more of a connector. I just like to understand where people are, how I could potentially help them. So I'm not just like cramming sales offers down people's throats. And so that would drive my coach crazy. But it was honestly just, it's how I function. I can't, I can't be her, right? And so, um, so I remember I came home from this one event and it had cost me, I think it was like $15,000 to be up on stage. And then it was like another eight or $9,000 to have a trade show booth. Plus I had to ship stuff there. Plus I had to travel, all this stuff. So it was expensive to go to this event. And during the event, you know, I connected with a ton of people. I was up on stage, so people saw me there. And then people came to my to my trade show booth to talk to me. And so I came home with this giant stack of cards of people who were like, yeah, you know, I'd love to learn more or whatever, right? And so I start working through my cards, just as my coach had taught me. And... Um, and I just, every single sales conversation, I felt like I was running up against a brick wall. People would be like, oh yeah, yeah, I kind of remember you. I mean, it was a, a three-day event, right? So there were lots of people speaking, lots of people that they talked to. They're like, oh yeah, I kind of remember you. I, oh yeah, remind me again what you do. And and who, like, what, you know, they were just like, I don't even know why I would want to work with you. Like it just doesn't, they, they weren't ready at all. They were just like, hmm, tell me again. Or, you know, let's just talk about the event. You know, which parts did you like? Which parts did you not like? And I was like, oh, these are not turning into sales at all. And, you know, part of it was that I wasn't, um, I wasn't super clear on where I was taking people, but part of it was they just like, they just didn't know me. They didn't know why we were even on the phone. Right. And it was painful because I had spent all that money and I'd basically followed my coach's advice into how to get clients. And then as I'm getting on the phone, I honestly just started feeling like I was banging my head against this wall of, of trying to connect and connect and connect and connect. And people are like, oh yeah, that sounds great. But they were never ready to buy. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this I'm going to go broke if I keep this up. And... My coach at the time, she was not into marketing funnels at all. In fact, she had asked me to put all of my funnels on hold. And I was just like, you know what? I can't do this. I have to roll out a marketing funnel. Because clearly, you know, I'm getting these people on the phone and they have no idea who I am, what I offer, why they would want to work with me. They just have no idea. And so I feel like I'm just pushing this sales boulder up a mountain and it keeps, you know, crashing back down on my head and smothering me with no's. No, 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 no. I mean, I probably had 300 people tell me no within, you know, a, a, I don't know, three, four week time period where I was just like, oh my gosh, this, <laughs> this is not going to be a good, a good for my business if I literally can't get anybody who's interested. And, you know, I, part of it was my approach to sales, but part of it was, again, like, just being a speaker up on stage with people clapping for you does not translate into people like rushing after you to hire you. That's a really different thing. And so, so let's talk about this because, you know, if you market well, selling comes naturally. You don't actually have to like push, right? It's just like, okay, is this the right time? Are we the right fit? Is this the right outcome? Yeah, here we go. And I know because that happens all the time to me now. But back then, I felt like selling was just like, I don't know, dialing for dollars. Like, please, will somebody please hire me? Um, and if you if you don't market well, selling, again, it's like pushing that boulder up a mountain. And it can just come crashing down on you and feel really defeating. So let's talk about why marketing can make such a huge difference for your ability to sell easily, sell comfortably, sell without feeling salesy. And this goes again for you if you're selling on the phone for sure, if you're selling on a webinar, if you're selling at an event, or if you're sending people straight to your sales page where you're trying to sell them there. 
But again, today I'm just going to focus on selling on the phone. So if you're talking one-on-one -on -one with somebody, just know that you can take these same principles that I'm going to talk about and apply them to whatever you, whatever way you sell. All right. <laughs> so let's talk about when sales calls go bad. Because I've had a lot of them. Like a lot, a lot. Probably somewhere close to a thousand sales calls that went really badly. And not that they were like bad people. It was just me not having a good process and me not approaching it well. So again, I told you the story of, you know, going to that event and speaking and coming home and following up with people. And what I found is that, you know, people, they didn't know who I was or why they'd want to work for me or work with me, not for me. Um, and it was painful because I felt like, I felt like I had to justify myself. I felt like I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm a great, I'm a great coach. I'm a great marketer. Like I can help you so well. But then I'm like, but I can't market myself. Like what is happening here? And I, you know, just spent so many of these calls just trying to find their pain or their need. And that part, you know, looking back, that was really insightful for me because I was able to get a really good feel of the market. But the problem is, is that when you're on a sales call with somebody, they're kind of on high alert unless they're ready to work with you. So if they're on high alert, they're not really wanting to like dive into the details. They um, don't want to give up much about what's really happening. And so you get a lot of excuses. Oh, I don't have the money. Oh, I don't have the time. Oh, you know, just those kinds of things. But that's not the real reason that people weren't working with me. And for me, calls would drag on and on and on. Like I'd just be following up and following up and following up. And I'd feel like I was ending up, again, justifying myself and just trying to talk people into why they needed to work with me. And it was so uncomfortable, so exhausting, so just, you know, it was, it was draining on me. And that feeling like, wow, no one wants to buy from me. No one thinks that I'm, you know, interesting or have value to add to them. That is a really defeating place to try to build a business from. And, you know, I had a choice. I was like, either I'm going to decide, you know, I have to throw it all in and go back to a job um, or I can figure something else out. And I decided to really just stop with the crazy going out to all these events. And instead, here's how I started turning things around. So number one, I listed out all the reasons that people said no to me. That was a really tough and painful exercise. Um, because I had to basically go back and be like, okay, they said no because of this. They said no because of this. Like, what What do I, what's really happening here? And as I went through, I just made a spreadsheet. And I was just like, you know, Jane said no because of blah. Um, you know, Bob said no because of blah. And, um, and at the end, I had like over 400 no's on there. And I had been keeping track. Like, I'd, I'd kept a notebook with some different... Um, just notes from my calls, but I also had a CRM that I was using at that time where I would put in stuff so that I could go back and just take a look. Okay, this is why all the people said no. So I had a lot of good data and it was so insanely valuable because what I started to see was this pattern emerging. The pattern was people did not trust me. People did not trust themselves and or people did not trust my process. So it really came down to like, I don't know if you're, you know, good. I don't know if I can do this. And I don't know that your process works. And I was just like, oh my gosh, as I really did all of the um, categories for this, those, that's the three categories that I came up with. And it really hit me in the face like a ton of bricks. I hadn't built any demand for me or my approach or my offer at all. I'd gotten these people's contact information, but I'd left them hanging off the what's next cliff. So they 
like they, I got their information and they were like, yeah, yeah, you know, follow up or, you know, send me whatever freebie it was I, that I had. But then there was this huge gulf between us of, yeah, send me your free stuff and why would I want to buy from you? <laughs> and I, I hadn't done anything to build a bridge between the two of those. And I didn't, I hadn't given them anything to um, build demand beyond speaking or being at a trade show um, in a booth where they could talk with me, you know, just in passing as they're talking to lots of people, right? So I was missing that bridge that took them from, okay, I'm going to give you my contact information to, oh my gosh, I need to buy from you. And that bridge is so important. So here's how I started turning things around. Because once I had this realization, I was like, oh my gosh, I know how to fix this. Um, you know, I'm not my previous mentor. I had, I, I needed to build that bridge. And I put myself in my audience's shoes. What would they actually want from me? And what could help them build demand? And I put together a super simple email series that included three simple emails that linked off to three blog posts to warm up my audience. So these were the the themes, the recurring themes that I kept hearing on all my calls. And I just put them into three simple blog posts, not long, not fancy, nothing like that. And then I just sent some emails and said, hey, you know, here's a, here's some content about this. Here's a blog post about that. And, and then on the fourth and fifth email, I offered a hooky tie-in to um, a PDF download. So, you know, I warmed them up with those three blog posts. And then emails four and five, I had this PDF download. And anyone who went and got the PDF was immediately invited to have a call with me on the next page. And more than 25% of the people that were already on my list that I had you know, been calling on the phone that I had met at these various events, more than 25% of them signed up right away for a call. And for those who did not sign up and for those who did sign up for a call, so both parties, if they signed up, if they did not sign up, I also followed up with three more emails outlining some good proof about the three big things that I had seen as as blockers in getting a new client on my calls. So the first thing that I that I sent an email about is why I was the answer they were looking for. And I used my own story and I used screenshots to prove that I knew what I was talking about and to start to you know build curiosity and build demand for what I had to offer. The second thing that I did in the email series, so email number two in this series, is why anyone could do this. And again, I used, um, I well, for this one, I used real clients. So I didn't just use me because I didn't want people to be like, well, yeah, of course you can do it. It's your approach. I used a real client example and a real client testimonial for this because I wanted people to see like, wow, if that person could do it, I could probably do it too. And then the third email that I did in this series was why now was the best time to get started. And I showed you know, some fast results from myself and my clients. And I also showed um, like what it would cost them to wait. So I was trying to build demand for, you know, why me? Why, why them? Like why you can do it? And then why now? Right? And at the end of the day, it took less than three weeks, start to finish, to sell out all my one-on-one client slots. And like, I didn't take any sales classes in this time, so it's still the same me showing up to the calls. Um, But this time, people were ready. They were ready to have this call with me. And this was my first sold out discovery call funnel that worked like an absolute charm. Like, it was a miracle. I made a lot of money off of that first time. And then I used that same funnel over and over and over again, at least seven different times. And each time, and I didn't have to change anything and because each time it would fill my calendar quickly again with the right people. And here's the best part of that simple funnel. When I got on the phone with potential clients to do sales calls, and again, I didn't take a sales class. I didn't like suddenly get a new brain implanted in me and able to do great sales calls. I had a totally different experience. I, you know, no more trying to get these people to open up. They came ready to talk. 
no more struggling to find a pain point to sell them on. They, they knew what their pain point was and they were ready to dive in and no more chasing and trying to sell myself. I literally had people, it was like a miracle. People were like, Michelle, how do I work with you? Michelle, do you have any more openings for clients? Like people were asking me this and I was like, you know, after, you know, I would get on the phone with people and they were excited to talk to me. They knew the topic that they wanted to cover with me. And they'd usually, again, say something like, what what will it take for us to start working together? The first time someone said that to me, I almost fell out of my chair. I was so thankful I was not on video because I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe somebody's actually chasing me and wanting to work with me. Like, this is amazing. And, you know, I I just realized how much it how much it could change the entire feeling, the entire approach, the value that I could give to somebody if I took the time to build demand for what I had before we had the sales conversation. And and I was just like, oh my gosh, it works. People want to work with me. And I cannot even tell you how amazing it was to jump on the phone with people who were already pretty much pre-sold. I mean, just imagine for yourself a call where people show up Number one, knowing what they want to talk to you about. Super clear. And number two, pretty much ready to buy from you. They just maybe need a few details about how it works, right? It felt amazing for me. And I realized just how important it was for me to create demand for me and my services before I ever got on the phone with people. And again, the exact same principle applies no matter how you sell. You've got to create demand for your offer and you, even if they don't know what the offer is, before you ask them to buy. So before they come to the webinar, before they get to your event, before they get to your sales page, or before they get on the phone with you, you've got to create that demand. Otherwise, they're going to pretty much automatically say no because they'll think that either, you know, you don't know what you're talking about, they won't be able to do it, or they're not sure that this approach works. So it's just easier to say no than to try to investigate, right? So we just covered a lot. And I have to tell you, these sold out discovery call funnels, they can be really, really simple. They don't have to be super hard. And for most people who are selling on the phone, you probably already have a lot of these pieces that you can pull together. And then it's just a matter of how do I take them from basically a stranger who's just opted in all the way to somebody who's basically showing up and saying, hey, how can I work with you? And the best way to do that is to find out the best marketing funnel for you because the sold out discovery call funnel is just one example. Um, There's actually lots and lots of different kinds of funnels. So so if you want to know the best marketing funnel to get you started, even if you don't have an offer right now or, or you don't have your offer ready to go, there are so many things that you can do. And the best thing that you can do to start with is to hop on over to today's show notes, which you can find at themarketingfunnelshow.com forward slash 36, or you can head straight to do the quiz at michellelevans.com forward slash marketing dash funnel dash quiz. And it's going to tell you in less than five minutes, you're going to know the exact right funnel for you. And I'll even give you some super simple video tutorials so that you can get the outline of your perfect funnel up and running literally today. You might not be able to create all the content today, but you can have, you know, your basic funnel ready to go. And then you just create the content and you're off and running. And honestly, you will be amazed that when you first start running this and when you truly understand how to build that demand so people know why they should buy from you, why they should buy this offer now, and that this offer will totally work for them, it changes the game of your business. All right, I am so excited to uh, have you as listeners to you know, have you in my audience. It's been just great to have so many of you reaching out to me with different questions or different ahas or things that you like from the show. If you wanna reach out to me, the best way is probably by email. It's michelle at michellelevans.com. And uh, you can also hit me up on Facebook, send me um, a message or on Twitter. 
Um, those are probably the best places to find me. So I will see you next week for another edition of The Marketing Funnel Show. Have a great week.